For me, overlay is about the degree to which the architecture can situate itself via geometry to leverage the very best aspects of sight, of lighting, and uh, all of the programmatic elements that can contribute to uh, the uh, daily praxis of, of, um, of those projects. Those are elements uh, that have to do with changing lighting, um, changing mood, uh, the, the feelings that the spaces evoke, and uh, uh, that are all calibrated in some very careful way to, to sight and view. The absolute key uh, element to, to this for me is that those, those elements, be them uh, views or lighting, the ways the spaces are used, uh, the materials and uh, how they create phenomenological translations between spaces and experiences, uh, those, those things uh, are overlays that are uh, discovered slowly in time, the things that are revealed in a way that they're not all uh, perceptible at once. I think that uh, the idea of using the building as an optical device, as a device for registering the natural environment is essential to most every project that I'm doing. So the, the way that the specific geometry of the plan of the section, the elevation, uh, how that comes together in three dimensions, uh, how that frames and represents uh, views, uh, represents light, and uh, positions the, the viewer in relation to the natural environment, either placing them in that environment, taking them out of that, and uh, superimposing them between the two, um, allowing one to be in one place while imagining the other. Uh, these are so critical to the work that I'm doing and I think that that type of framing is what I uh, aspire all of the projects to be capable of. I think that natural light is an absolutely critical aspect of my work. It's what I use to uh, shape form spaces and, and a lot of the uh, conceptual uh, basis for the work is to do with natural light and the phenomenological position that we are as, as people. The degree to which that impacts my work is, is I think, prevalent throughout every, everything on the board. So in my work, um, I'm very sensitive to the amount of uh, natural light that's, that's brought into all the projects. I study that very closely through uh, computer modeling and physical modeling and photography. And uh, I'm always looking to as carefully as possible calibrate the natural light level at different times of the day and different seasons of the different projects. In my work, I want each element to do as many things as it can. So I thought if I'm going to show my work, I, I need somehow for the, the work itself to be mediated with the gallery. The work is organized by uh, seven different projects and the seven projects and move across the, uh, the wall. The work moves geometrically to some degree, and, and I thought that in this case, the frames and the organization of the frames can do a lot more to teach us something about the, the gallery, the way the light works in the gallery, the way we view uh, in the gallery, so how someone stands in relation to the work, their eye level. Address this idea of the white box gallery, which is uh, ubiquitous in in the art world, in the way that we've come to understand art and look at art. And I thought one might wish to actually take that on as a, as a project in and of itself to say, what if the metafigure here is a, 
is a white box, and it's made of little white boxes, but how could they be distorted, and how could that, uh, that perfect rectilinear image plane be um, uniquely shaped to address the viewer in a way that's different than uh, it's typically done. The position of this next to the window is a way to both leverage the natural light from and regi to register, reflect, and diffuse that light uh, to cast shadows, to register the movement of that on the, on the wall of the gallery, and to kind of use this as a, an instrument to register the, the different qualities of light in the space over the course of the day. This fall, I'm preparing an exhibition and a panel discussion and a workshop on uh, architecture and sailing. And I'm working with Greg Lynn, uh, looking at, talking about the, you know, how something is site specific in a way that a sailboat is specific uh, to its use and specific to place. And it's just so clear to me how relating to the, to the natural environment in such a in such an intimate way is, uh, is related to my design practice. My father and mother sailed on the Great Lakes and would do the Mackinac Island race. And when I was a little baby, I'd cruise back down uh, through uh, Lake Huron uh, for a couple weeks every summer. And so I started sailing when I was, uh, you know, in the womb, I was, <laughs> I was tiny. When I started working uh, for uh, uh, Gary partners, Frank Gary, we sailed uh, on, a, on a boat with his former partner. I was uh, sailing as the team captain and, and the helmsman for, the, for the, uh, the office sailing team, which was just remarkable. It was a testament to his generosity, and sailing is obviously a really important thing. And, and a lot of the work he's done, thought about. Then I would do other offshore races on other boats. Began sailing with Greg Lynn as well, and racing with Greg, and we uh, raced all over Southern California. After I finish the symposium, I'm going to do a fellowship at the McDowell Colony uh, next winter, and I'm going to be working on a book toward sailing and architecture. I have another uh, smaller uh, project which is starting construction uh, this summer as well, which is the design of a, uh, of a canopy, which again goes back to the sailing technique. Looking at getting a couple of spinnaker poles that hold a, a, a large fabric shape that's going to open and close and, and um, be operated by, by kids. Mm -hmm.